So when I first started uh, flight training, uh, initially I had no clue that all aircraft started with the letter November. I just thought it happened to be unique to the field I was flying out of. There's a lot of history behind where N numbers came from and it's not nationality. That is not what that stands for. So real quick, I wanted to jump on here and uh, I know I'm still working on the 140 right now, but uh, I wanted to just do a quick little historical video on where we got the letter N for U.S. registered aircraft. So I hope you guys enjoy this and I hope you learned something from this. The United States received the letter N as its nationality designator under the International Air Navigation Convention, which was held in 1919. The convention prescribed an aircraft marking scheme of a single letter indicated nationality followed by a hyphen and four identity letters. The five letters together were to be the aircraft's radio call sign. Originally, that 1919 allotment would allow all nations to share the same letter. Only the U.S. and four other nations were assigned a unique first letter to be followed by any combination. In each case, the first letter was the same as a radio call letter that had been previously assigned to that nation. In April of 1913, for example, Great Britain had complete rights to the radio letters B, G, and M, while sharing other letters. Not surprisingly, Great Britain received the letter G as its aircraft nationality identifier under the 1919 agreement. During this era, the U.S. had complete rights to the letters N and W, as well as a combination of K, from KDA to KZZ. Why these particular letters? The assignments of W and K appear to have been arbitrary according to articles on the early radio call signs by a guy named Thomas H. White. In the case of N, or November, White notes that the U.S. Navy had been using this radio letter since November of 1919. This still leaves a question as to why November was chosen over whiskey for the U.S. aircraft identifier. This answer may lie in the fact that the government had reserved November for itself while assigning combinations of K and W to various radio stations along geographic lines. The N, or November, would therefore be less confusing as a single national aircraft marking. Compliance was voluntary at this time since the U.S. did not ratify the 1919 convention. No mention of N numbers appeared in the initial air commerce regulations placed in the FAA's first predecessor agency in December of 1926. The earliest legal requirements for N number markings is found in the first general amendments to the air commerce regulations of 1927. These amendments mandate that the U.S. registered aircraft engaging in foreign air commerce display the N at the beginning of its identification markings. Later, this requirement was extended to all U.S. aircraft, regardless of whether or not they operated beyond the nation's borders. A second letter indicating the aircraft's airworthiness category followed the November and preceded its identification numbers. These airworthiness identifiers were C for standard, R for restricted, X for experimental, and later L for limited. For example, you would have November Charlie 1234. This would be a U.S.-based standard aircraft with an identifier of 1234. This was the standard until December 31st of 1948 when aircraft registration for the first time were required to display identification marks consisting only of the Roman capital letter N followed by the registration number. But until December 31st of 1960, the required location for display of the nationality and identification marks for fixed-wing aircraft was the wing surfaces and the vertical surface on either the tail or fuselage. But effective of January 1st of 1960, all fixed-wing aircraft were required to display ID marks on the vertical surfaces, either the tail or the fuselage. Wing surfaces markings were no longer required. Current standards for the display of nationality and registration identification marks on U.S. aircraft can be found in Part 45, Subpart C of the U.S. Code of Federal Regulations, Title 14.